Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, life strategist and spiritual coach. This is episode 9, Patience. Okay. So before we get started, a couple of things. First, thanks to everybody who's come to PeaceLoveMoney.com and signed up or bought any of the things in the $5 library or for my coaching service. I really appreciate it. The response has been unbelievable. Thank you for all the feedback. I'm adding new things in every week, so even if you've been there, if you've bought something or signed up for something before, check back because I'm always rolling out new stuff. In fact, I'm probably going to put something up new tomorrow in favor of Valentine's Day. Even I don't know what I might do. <laughs> Second thing. Um, tomorrow, February 12th, as of the time of this recording, is a major Hindu holiday uh, for uh, venerating Shiva. And I'm not even going to try and say it because I'll say it wrong, but to my Hindu brothers and sisters, namaste. And finally, this Saturday, again, as of the time of this recording, is Valentine's Day, or as some might call it, Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> so that's actually why I wanted to talk about patience today, because we've already done love. And patience is important in relationships, in love, and just in the law of attraction in general. And I'm trying to be cool and set my stopwatch up, but it wants to keep falling. So like always, let's start off with a quote. Most people greatly overestimate what they can accomplish in one year but greatly underestimate what they can accomplish in 10. That's from Jim Rohn, who recently passed on, by the way, so rest in peace, Jim Rohn. Most people greatly overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, but greatly underestimate what they can accomplish in 10. That's from Jim Rohn. So, obviously every day people come to me with a lot of situations and questions and things that they're trying to deal with. And quite often, a lot of the tools and tactics and strategies that I can share with you solve things instantly. I mean, it is not at all uncommon to get over phobias instantly or pain from past trauma instantly or, or memories that, that are causing you trouble instantly or let go of old relationships instantly. But it's not always instant, okay? And most things in life don't happen just because you snap your fingers. I mean, I hear again and again where people are like, well, I made my vision board and I had my goals and I did it for a week, but I didn't get a million dollars, so I just stopped. Okay? There, there's a couple of reasons that, that this doesn't work. See, anytime you're doing something that's based on willpower, anytime you've got something that you're like, I'm just not going to smoke anymore, or I'm not going to drink anymore, or I'm not going to eat sweets or drink coffee or I'm just going to make myself get up at 5 a.m. every day and go to the gym, it's not going to work, okay? You may have heard before where it takes 21 days to form a habit, sort of. If you do something for at least 21 days, it's more likely to stick than not, but it's not guaranteed. Because here's the thing, we've talked before about your subconscious mind, okay? Your subconscious mind is like a 5-year-old, maybe a 10-year-old, okay? And it's like a 10-year-old with the mind of a supercomputer that never forgets anything and takes everything absolutely literally. So that's where your habits live, in your subconscious mind. So if there's something that you do that you know you shouldn't and you want to stop, it's coming out of your subconscious mind because your subconscious thinks, I want this, right? So when you try and use willpower to force yourself to do something, that is your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is what we're talking with right now. Actually, I talk to your conscious and your subconscious at the same time, but I'll explain how I do that later. But for the most part, your conscious mind is the one that has conversations, reads books, watches TV, right? And it's like the parent. Your conscious mind has no imagination at all, right? So it comes in, and imagine if you as an adult came to a child and you're like, do not do that anymore at all. And while you're standing there, it might cooperate. You know, the child will do what you want as long as you're standing there. But if you're a parent or have a young brother or sister, I think you realize that's not going to last, right? And so it's the same thing with you. And that's why willpower in and of itself doesn't work, okay? So that's why you, when people don't get results very quickly, it's because you're trying to dominate a part of your mind that, to be honest, cannot be dominated. I mean, if you're going to just fight and wrestle with the subconscious, the subconscious is going to win 10 out of 10 times, okay? Now, the other thing you have to realize is whatever this habit is, whatever the change you want to make, let's say you're not trying to break anything bad, but 
you just want to be a more a more cheerful person or you've just resolved to be a more outgoing person or you've decided that you want to triple your income not that your current income is bad you just want more it's the same thing though it's like your T. Harv Eker teaches this in his Millionaire Mind book that your mind is like a thermostat um, I hope it's called a thermostat all over the world you know the thing that controls how hot or cold it is in the room and you set it, like maybe you set it to 72 degrees, or you set it to 25 degrees Celsius, or whatever. And it will keep the room that temperature. And if the room gets too hot, it will cool it down. If the room gets too cold, it will heat it up. Your mind works the same way, okay? You have a certain comfort level of where you like to exist. You have a certain comfort level regarding money, regarding your weight, regarding your relationships, regarding your job, regarding everything. And if you want to know where that comfort level is, you look around. You're at it. <laughs> this is it right now. Okay? So if you just try and force and push and drive yourself to do something different and to really change quickly, that's why something in you tends to resist it. Okay? So the first thing is just relax. If you know that you're going to be enacting change, recognize that it might come in an instant. Recognize it might show up tomorrow. It might show up in a month. It might show up in a year. But it will show up. Just like we talked about last time, as long as you're moving in the right direction. If you lose an ounce, that's going in the right direction. If you make a dollar more today than you had yesterday, that's moving in the right direction. And you have to celebrate all of those little victories. Like they're big victories. Because here's the thing, they are big victories. All that making a million dollars is, is making a dollar a million times. So if when you make a little more money, you're like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. What you're saying to the universe is, I don't want any more money. Another thing that Harv Eker teaches is when you find like change in the street, like if you find a penny or a dime or a dollar, you're supposed to celebrate and say, I'm a money magnet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right? Because it is the same thing. The universe sent cash to you. If you decide that it's not enough, then you're actually telling the universe, I don't want it. And that's the thing. You don't want to get hung up on it's not enough. Like we talked about before, with I'm not good enough. That's, it's the worst thing in the world to get hung up in that cycle. So I was just having a conversation with a very close friend of mine who is having difficulty in their relationship. And the problem is, this person is having difficulty forgiving their partner in releasing some things that have happened. Like say... When you're in a relationship or with anything in life, you probably have a way that you want it to go. Okay? That's no problem. Everybody does. But I use the parallel in explaining it to this person. Say I want chocolate ice cream. And I decide I want chocolate ice cream. And my wife walks in the door right now and she surprised me with strawberry ice cream. Okay? Now there's two schools of thought right here. There's a crossroads right here. Where you can say... But it's not chocolate, and so I'm unhappy. Or you can say, it's still ice cream. Good times. Okay? And the second school of thought, the I'm happy that I've got ice cream, period, will definitely lead to a happier life overall and a more joyous life overall. Because in any situation, there's always something to be excited about. There's always something to be happy about. There's always something to be grateful for if you choose to see it. But the opposite is true. There's something to be unhappy about if you choose to focus on that instead. Okay? So like always, for my brothers and sisters on YouTube, I'm splitting this in half right here. Don't forget to watch part two. For everybody else, stay tuned. We're going to get right back to it. Hey everybody, B. Dave Walters here. If you like these videos that I do and articles that I write, then I would ask... Send them to your friends. Post them on your profile. Let's spread the word. There's a lot of things out there that are will bring you down if you let them. And it's good to be able to provide people with just a little hope, a little inspiration, and kind of a bright light in their day. So if there's somebody you think would like this, send it to them. And if you want more, if you want more about me, contact me, work with me, visit my website, peacelovemoney.com. There's all kinds of things there. Tools you can use, meditations you can use, other things I've written that will help you get ahead quickly. PeaceLoveMoney.com. You're fantastic. Thanks. Bye.